Welcome to the Daily Devotional with Derek Nider. Thanks for joining us as he walks us through the pages of Scripture with a daily word of insight and encouragement. Hey, we're in Psalm 139, verse 19 today. If you have your Bibles, open up, please. Uh, find your Bible, open it up, and I'm going to just ask God to reveal himself to us, and we'll go ahead and read these scriptures today and think about them. Father, thank you for the scripture today and David's heart and his desire to align himself to you and um, just the greatness of his love and even the personal offense that he took when people didn't love you. I pray that you would help us, God, to really uh, love those things that you love and hate those things that you hate. In Jesus' name, amen. This is going to be interesting to you today, all right? And I think, you know, from the perspective of a New Testament Christian, um, there are things you're going to identify with David on, and there are things that you're going to be thinking, man, that just doesn't, I'm not sure I really align with what David said there. And this is what he said, Oh, that you would slay the wicked, O God. O men of blood, depart from me. They speak against you with malicious intent. Your enemies take your name in vain. That obviously should be connecting you back to Exodus chapter 20 um, when God commanded Moses to write on the stone tablet um, the commandment to not take his name in vain. Do I not hate those who hate you, O Lord? And do I not loathe those who rise up against you? Check this out. I hate them with a complete hatred. I count them my enemies. You know, David, uh, David is, remember, David has been meditating, thinking about God, overwhelmed by the love of God. His whole value system has been shaped by, um, by the all-knowing love of God for his children, the witness of God, the creative uh, power of God displayed in the forming and shaping of his life while he was still in his mother's womb. And all of this, right, all of this has flooded David's heart with an overwhelming appreciation and gratitude of God and who God is. And, you know, remember David was a warrior king and Israel was to be a light to the nations. And um, a lot of times as you're reading the Old Testament, what you'll discover is, and we know from a New Testament point of view, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers. There is an unseen realm, and there is a there is a war happening in the unseen realm. That was manifested physically um, during you know the era of Israel, and particularly them um, coming in and conquering uh, the nations that were inhabiting the Promised Land. All of that was manifested physically. And so it was, uh, it was really the, the unseen realm, the battle against light and darkness, good and evil, manifested in a, in a physical sense. And, and um, so when David is talking in these terms about hating those that hate God and loathing those that despise God, like this is the framework that he's been living in. And he loves God so much that he is on he is on the defense. He is offended by anyone who has aligned themselves against God and has resisted or rejected uh, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the, the monotheistic God. Remember, David was surrounded by a polytheistic uh, world. They were an island. Israel was an island. And every other culture around them was polytheistic. They did not understand God and they'd align themselves against God. And so, you know, from a New Testament point of view, um, do, we, do we have a righteous indignation against those things that God uh, is displeased with or those things that are against God? We absolutely do. We know how to hate those things that God hates and to love those things that God loves. Do we hate people who hate God? Do we hate people who don't understand God or have aligned themselves against God? We do not because we know for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. For goodness sakes, we used to be those people. Like we were those people. Many of us were, like we were in a place where, where, where we were technically the enemies of God 
And it was the grace of God and the loving kindness of God, um, the work of the Spirit of God convicting us of, of sin and righteousness and of judgment that drew us to himself. It was the relentless mercy of God going after those who were in opposition. And so, you know, we have a fuller revelation than David did. We have, we have the revelation of the cross of Christ and the ultimate plan of God to redeem a wayward humanity to himself. I think um, I identify with what David says in the sense of with respect to the revelation that he had in the context of the nation of Israel and what, was, what God was doing in the moment, you can understand why David said what he said. We are, we've, we've matured beyond that because we have the, the incarnation, the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. And now we live to be tools through which he fulfills his redemptive work in humanity and draws those, draws those who have been, um, who have been uh, in not just misalignment, but who have made themselves to be the enemy of God. And we also understand that in the consummation of all things, that God himself is going to be the one who judges. God is going to be the one um, to sentence those who've, who've rejected the gospel and his love and his uh, many revelations. He is going to be the one to sentence them to um, a place of outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Remember, vengeance is mine, says the Lord. You know, those things are left in the hands of God. Our mission on this earth is to reach those who are lost with the good news of Jesus Christ, even those who are in absolute rebellion. And I just want to leave you with this thought. You know, sometimes we, you know, we're, we're being a light and we're sharing our faith and we're loving Jesus. And we know we hit those people who really are totally opposed to God. Um, and they can be sometimes really vociferous and, um, and antagonistic. Uh, and I was reading C.S. Lewis, uh, one of his books, and, and he said, when you throw a rock into a pack of wolves, the one who yelps is the one who got hit. And sometimes the person who is the most outspoken uh, enemy to God and to your faith is actually the one who's being convicted the most. And so don't, don't quit. Keep being a light in the midst of great darkness. Have a good day. We hope this podcast has ministered to you. If it has, we welcome you to rate it or leave a review. If you would like to stay connected with Pastor Derek Nider or find many more teachings, please visit awakenlv.org. Click visit and then choose Pastor Derek Nider. These links are also in this episode's description. Until next time, God bless you.